First and four, it's a scene that we're going to get used to seeing all week. Find out how much we're going to get out of seven straight days of rain chances. Karen? All right, Ben, and first and four, guilty and gone. A member of Detroit City Council makes a plea deal in court that will affect voters in his district. Plus, getting a COVID vaccine this week might be easier than ever before. Why this Michigan Congresswoman says this new push is very personal for her. It's all next, first and four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, a Detroit City Council member steps down after pleading guilty to misconduct in office. Gabe Leland appeared briefly on Zoom this morning as he entered his guilty plea. Leland also resigned from the City Council and has represented District, District 7 since 2013. Leland admitted to accepting $7,500 in cash and free car repairs back in 2017 in exchange for his vote on a land deal. As part of the plea agreement, Leland will face no jail time and the federal case against him on bribery charges will be dropped. Sentencing is set for June 7th. Tonight at 5, we'll have reaction for city leaders on today's decision. We're also tracking a traffic mess over Macomb County. Just one lane of eastbound 994 is open at 16 Mile Metro Parkway. Cleanup crews have been on the scene for hours after an accident involving two pickup trucks and a semi that rolled over. Now we are waiting on information on injuries. If you can't avoid the area on the drive home, please do. Governor Whitmer has set specific vaccine goals and now Michigan lawmakers are pushing a mass vaccination week to get our numbers up and better protect minority communities. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom for us this afternoon. And Kim, we're seeing several vaccination programs kicking off in Metro Detroit. We are, Karen. Good afternoon. We're seeing more walk-in clinics, door-to-door -door outreach, and neighbors getting paid to help neighbors. It's a powerful push to get more people vaccinated, and Michigan Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence helped kick things off. We are doing a mass get out the, the vaccine week, GOTV. And what you're seeing here is what we're doing in Michigan. State and local lawmakers are working with Beaumont Hospital to get more people vaccinated, especially in minority communities. Beaumont Hospitals is helping with accessibility, opening more walk-in clinics all week long. At the same time, the city of Detroit is kicking off a door knocking campaign targeting neighborhoods around six vaccination sites. City is also offering $50 gift cards to anyone who brings a Detroiter to get a COVID shot, but you must be registered with the Good Neighbor program first. In particular, Congresswoman Lauren. I've been to too many memorials and funerals. Pray for too many of the community leaders who were hospitalized and had death's door in the hospital from the black and brown community. I don't want to go through this again. Get the vaccine. So Karen, we're already hearing from people who are using that Good Neighbor program and qualifying for debit cards. You'll hear that part of the story coming up on the news at five. Also, you can get information on all the vaccine options we talked about on the homepage of our website. Click on Detroit.com. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Kim. We're also tracking Michigan's progress toward the first vaccination goal set by the governor. As of this afternoon, 50% of Michiganders have received at least one COVID shot. If and when that number gets to 55%, the state will allow in-person work for all sectors of business. Also today, the state is reporting more than 5,000 new cases of the virus over the past two days, along with 29 additional deaths. Hope you enjoyed it while it lasted because man, that warm weather's gone. The gloomy weather's in. We've got rain and oh, I have a feeling. Multiple rounds of light rain just kind of skirting through the area over the next few days. We'll take a closer look here on the east side. This is where the last of at least this round of more widespread showers are. You can see that here right up along 94, some of the uh, northern, I should say, southern parts of Macomb County. And we'll see that exit as we head towards 7, 8 o'clock tonight. I think we'll start drying out and then spend the later parts of the evening under cloudy skies and dry conditions. But those temperatures really not going to move a whole lot. They'll be in the upper 50s for most of the evening. And we're going to be cool all week. In fact, tomorrow is going to be our warmest high temperature, staying cool for the remainder of the period. And then even when we look further in the seven day forecast, Karen, not a whole lot of changes. So we'll tell you what this all adds up to as far as rainfall goes in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Ben. Friends and family gathered today for the funeral of Andrew Brown Jr., who was shot by sheriff's deputies. An ensemble of songs and praise filled the church, 
as the service began in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. The 42-year-old father of seven was killed nearly two weeks ago when deputies tried to serve a drug-related search and arrest warrant. The Reverend Al Sharpton delivered the eulogy. We are going to celebrate him, but we are not going to excuse the fact that we shouldn't have to be here to do this. So don't confuse the celebration with the determination to get justice in this matter. The FBI has opened a civil rights investigation into the shooting. Here at home, it's one of the Metro Detroit's major attractions, a life-sized open-air history museum. We're talking about Greenfield Village, where you can get up close and personal with some building where American history was made. Well, today, Local 4's Everard Casme shows us how one building just received an upgrade that was years in the making. So if you're familiar with this building, you probably won't notice the major change that was just completed. The scaffolding is still here as restoration was just completed on the sign at the top of the Wright Brothers Cycle Shop. This is the birthplace of aviation. This is a photo of the original Wright Brothers Cycle Shop where it stood in Dayton, Ohio. And this is what it used to look like after it was moved to Greenfield Village. And this is where they set up shop basically to build um, their own bicycles and then eventually planes in the early 1900s. For Jim Johnson, there was one detail missing from the building structure. It was a project the village wanted to take on to make sure the shop was as authentic as it was back then. What went missing on the, on the building in 1919 when all these changes took place was this beautiful crest on the top of the building that declared this the Charles or C. Webert block. I know Mr. Webert wanted it put back up. There was some discussion about that, but it, it really never transpired. And it would have been a complicated process to try to figure out what this thing looked like. But these photos show its original state. The detail might seem small, but recreating it was three years in the making. It cost several thousand dollars in materials, designing and installation time. The end result sits atop the building today. It's really gratifying to see it and to know that it's not going anywhere at this point. It was designed to be to have long life up there. And here's the thing. You can come and see this for yourself. Greenfield Village is open now Thursday through Sunday. No appointments are needed in Dearborn. Evrod Casimir, Local 4. All right, thanks, Evrod. By the way, Evrod tells us the sign was recreated by famous Ford engineer and conservation volunteer Mosey Noland and carpenter Mike Zimney. Still ahead here first at four, no more newspapers. How the COVID pandemic led to a major media shift in one country. Also, storm damage and a word of warning. Why the mayor in one town is telling people to stay home after a series of tornadoes. First, no more social distancing in midair. A quick reminder about a policy change at one of the biggest carriers at Detroit's Metro Airport.